Well, we are pumping PV direct. We got my little test rig up and running. And I took two extra panels that I had and basically just screwed it down to a little makeshift uh, rack on this nice oak skid that I had lying around actually from some of the walkway that we had just put in and I'm only going to use it during the summer so I mean it's not terribly robust but it's strong enough and I had a, um, a 27 volt half horse DC motor that um, I got from a guy on Craigslist and this great little what do they call it a um, uh, recirculating turbine pump it's a Roth and it's a turbine pump but it's a regenerative that's the word regenerative turbine pump which is somehow or another kind of like hybrid between a pure um, centrifugal pump and a pure turbine pump anyway for what it's worth it's rated at like a quarter or a half a horse so small pump but it's good for high head low flow applications which I have about 70 feet from down there at the creek I'm gonna go draw some water and I'm gonna pump it all the way up to my rain tanks which are empty right now and this is how I'm gonna solve the problem pretty excited about this and uh, anyway a couple quick lessons learned one was tried running this pump yesterday dry and realized there are some packings in the um, this is cantilevered in here the, there's a little turbine blade inside here and the packings obviously required water to um, to run properly so anyway I'm um, now I got water in it and there's plenty lubed up as you can see I kind of sprayed some up here um, for these two bearings that hold the shaft but once I got water in it, it spun pretty easily. Because yesterday it seized up and this thing wouldn't even run it. Second lesson learned was that I let this thing run just engine only, or the motor only. I realized that it was uh, getting really hot. And then I took a closer look at the data plate. Is the duty cycle is air over. And I've never seen that before, but I figured it probably had something to do with the fact that <laughs> there are no holes in this motor and it needed to cool itself. So, anyway, have a look at this. So, Michael. I went in, I went in and um, just cut a piece of sheet aluminum and Put some self-tapping screws in. I did drill them, but put a couple of screws in to hold it in place and bent the blades and I made a fan. And so I'm playing with the, the pulley ratio right now to see, but this is probably a little bit, maybe maybe 1750, somewhere around there, because I think it's spinning a little bit faster than that. And I'm stepping it down a little bit. So yeah, somewhere around 2000 RPM, which is fine. I don't want too high of a gear ratio because then it won't start itself up. Right now, it may not, so I gotta let it kind of run a little bit. Yeah, see, right now it won't, which I'm gonna have to do this manually somehow or another. So anyway, that's kind of where we are. Let me crank it back up and we'll see how it pumps a little bit. Here, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this thing break in a little bit. I'm just testing it here. But this is a pretty happy sight. We are pumping the solar. Scott, figured you'd be proud. Thanks for the inspiration. I'm gonna just run get get the pallet forks, run this thing down to the creek, set it down there, and get some longer one inch intake with a little basket filter and a check valve on it by the way so um, I'm gonna put a basket filter on the bottom of this intake that goes in the creek and right above it I'm gonna put a check valve 
so that it uh, it keeps the water in the, in the pump and then in the supply line the output line or discharge I think they call it that goes about 500 feet up to my rainwater tanks and I got 5,000 gallons of rainwater that I need to fill up so I'll let this thing run and see how long it takes but anyway that check valve is going to keep the whole system wet so I don't have to reprime it is my guess but anyway that's it for now see how it goes <laughs>